Hello and welcome to another episode of Forkful of Noodles. I am Krish Mohan. We are also exploring new options of materials that can decrease the amount of plastics we've dumped into the ocean. Really, we can replace all the plastic items uh, and make them out of bacon. I mean, we have an obsession with bacon in America, and I bet if we used it as an alternative to plastic, we'd eradicate the Great Pacific Garbage Patch like within maybe like a month. Definitely our lifetime, but de like maybe a month. It is odd that America loves bacon so much. You know, it puts it on everything from sandwiches to milkshake, clothes. I mean, we already make bowls out of bacon. It's almost like we're saying, hey, pigs, okay, we know that you're all smart and feel emotions better than us, but don't think that you're next in line to control this planet, okay? You haven't even figured out how delicious you are. But maybe if we start using bacon as a substitute for plastic, they'd be cool with their own genocide and murder. And, you know, until they animal farm us off the planet and, and build a better world, probably, you know. Bio-based polymer ideas are an actual solution to replacing plastics. And there are a few places trying to develop new polymers that won't linger in our systems forever. It just seems like plastics are worse than herpes. Like, they're a problem, and they just never go away. In Finland, the VTT Technical Research Center has made a polymer out of sugar. So when this bio-based polymer goes through the recycling process, it can be turned back into the sugar and go into your coffee or, or into making a, another bottle of water. Polymer is made out of sugar and it's a called polyhydroxy acid. So it's a biodegradable polymer which is uh, degrading in a normal compounds in nature. Uh, BGA uh, as a polymer has a superior properties as a film. So it's the highest oxygen barrier known. So it's better than any oil-based oxygen barrier as a film, which basically means that the oxygen is not penetrating through the film so easy. And, and when it keeps the oxygen on the other side, it enables of production so what is called a modified atmosphere package. And this modified atmosphere package means that there is a protective gas in the package and the oxygen is outside and it's not destroying the contents. I mean, this is going to revolutionize the sugar water industry. And this was developed back in 2012 and was production ready then. Sweden is utilizing paper to create packages and most of the paper in the world is recycled. Paper is more environmentally friendly and it can be recycled. In fact, today almost 60% of the paper used worldwide is recycled. Paper is a lot more biodegradable and you can set it on fire and turn it into legal drug paraphernalia. You can't outlaw paper pigs. Okay, and that's not me attacking the pigs that might save our lives, but rather the cops that make our lives way more difficult to live, like plastic. Law enforcement is like the plastic of our communities. The New Materials Institute is looking to create polymers that break down easier and reduce plastics and trash that winds up in the ocean. In tandem with the Center of, of Bioplastics and Biocomposites, they are trying to mirror systems in nature to create an efficient and sustainable solution for this problem. The only thing that makes me wary of them is that they're also partnering with 3M and Ford and Hyundai and a few other corporations. And those corporations might not let the research move forward if they don't see immediate profits. Corporations are like the plastics of progress. But there is a plastics of nature, fungus. Okay, uh, so before everybody just orders like a mushroom pizza and tries to construct a water bottle out of that, just, just give me a minute. 
At the Utrecht University in the Netherlands, scientists are growing fungus, drying them up, and then heating them up to create the raw materials that you can turn into packages, bottles, and let's be honest, condoms. Humans won't be happy until they've come on everything. Can you tell me from beginning to end, what are, what are the steps that you go through to grow the mycelium? Yeah, you start with the culture, which you usually have stored in the lab, and you transfer uh, a little piece of this uh, culture into a plate, which also embeds inside nutrients, which allow the fungus to grow and spread. When the growth will be effective, you can actually demold your object and uh, make sure to stop the growing process of the microorganism. And this can be achieved by cooking the object. Mm -hmm. So at that moment, your material becomes a completely inert material. And this is just pure mycelium? This is pure mycelium. The same fungus can be grown in different conditions and with different strategies. So the materials could be the most different, ranging from rubber-like materials yeah. with a certain flexibility to more plastic-like materials or leather. And this is all the same fungus? This is all the as same this fungus, one. yeah. That's crazy. So how do you see it, you know, the use of, of mycelium and of fungus in the future? Well, I think actually the, the possibilities are endless. We are just at the start, despite the fact that it's, uh, it seems to me already a very long time I'm working on it. I'm also very much aware that uh, there is much more in front of me to be done. And uh, I'm quite confident that uh, in a few years we'll have uh, quite few groundbreaking results. I mean, even the name mycelium sounds like a brand of condom. Fungi are also used as glue to put together 3D printed furniture. So this is the end product. Yeah, here's the off. This is um, helemaal degroeid. The schimmel is on the binnen buitenkant and hij is gedroogd. Hey, you feel it all? Mm -hmm. Enorm licht. And how strong is this? Um, yeah, it is, it is strong enough to sit. This trick here. Yeah. You can it now go sit. Ja, 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 alleen deze moet naar Amerika, dus ik ben een beetje voorzichtig. <laughs> <laughs> Anders mocht je er voor mij op gaan zitten. Maar ik heb in principe wat, uh... zou ik hier op kunnen zitten, op dit kleine ding. Ja, ja zeker. Ja. Okay. Ja, het is sterk. The end product is a material that's a bit similar to cork. It's light, strong, fire resistant and water repellent, making it perfect for isolation or packaging material. In the States, a company called Ecovative is using fungus to replace plastic packaging. And since it's not alive and growing, this won't be an invasive species like bacteria. Packaging is, is something that we should always have if we have products. I mean, it's a natural part of our economy. So make something that's far better in every respect. Use fewer resources to make it, use less energy to make it, and make that disposal part so it can just go into our natural environment. The company mass produces the composite we saw earlier as a replacement for styrofoam. So once the parts have fully grown out in their tools, it takes about five to six days, uh, we remove them from the tool and we take those finished parts, which are wet and rubbery, and we put them in our drying oven here. This inactivates the organism, so it won't grow in your box, it won't eat your computer or your television. Uh, it's not an invasive species risk, right? The packaging's dead when it gets to your home. Um, but it does make the product stiff and lightweight. And it's highly sustainable since fungus are part of nature's cycle. We'd probably get rid of littering as a crime. With fungal packaging, it will become mandatory to litter. Using something from nature to be a part of its cycle is a huge step to heal the planet. It's the obvious eureka that our species seldom sees. With advances made with fungal material, we have to make sure that Monsanto doesn't get its grubby little hands on it because they genetically modify the growth of the fungus. And, and if we do that in any way, we might wind up in like a sci-fi nightmare that can only be dreamt up by Stephen King. And the most horrifying part about all of that is that they'd probably find some way to charge all of us for living in this fungal growth epidemic to make money off of a problem that they created. It's going to take everything to get this planet back into shape so we don't wind up going extinct by our own hands and our legacy will be floating vestiges of consumerism waste 
and an inability to control ourselves for the sake of convenience. From different methods to clean the ocean, trying to mirror nature's own cycles and working with it, we can divest from oil-based plastics, make ourselves economically unviable so corporations can't exploit us, kill the planet, and turn a buck. When we die, we should become a part of nature instead of be rejected by it. That's been your fork full of noodles for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we are doing a little something different with fork full of noodles. Uh, it's very difficult to produce 30 minutes of content every single week with my touring schedule. Uh, so we are breaking up the 30 minute schedule, 30 minute episodes into three different parts. Uh, the reason for that is because I'm the only employee of this show. Uh, I write it, do all the research, film it, and edit it. Uh, there's nobody else on staff to do that. So uh, with my touring schedule, it's very hard to produce these shows. Um, so basically, if you want to see the full 30-minute episode before it gets released, uh, which I will be releasing the full 30-minute episodes, you can, sub you can donate to my Patreon at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, if you donate to the Patreon, you will get early access to the full 30 minute episode, um, probably every other week or every third week, something like that. But basically after the first part goes out. So that uh, again is patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. So if you enjoyed this episode, if you enjoyed this portion of the show, uh, please share it with your friends or your enemies or whoever you think might enjoy this video. I have live stand-up comedy shows coming up in Asheville, North Carolina, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee, Atlanta, Georgia, Charlotte, North Carolina, Greensboro, North Carolina, and Norfolk, Virginia. If you're in those towns, come hang out with us. And to see my entire tour schedule, to see where if I'm coming to a city near you, you can go to ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. While you're there, you can check out some of my stand-up comedy albums, uh, which are available on all of the download and streaming services. Uh, and you can also subscribe to our email newsletters, or you can also subscribe to the Bandcamp to get unreleased, exclusive stand-up comedy material every single month directly to your inbox. And like I said, if you want to help the show financially, you can donate to our Patreon at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. And if you can't donate to uh, financially to the show, that's okay. A great way to help the show is by sharing. Sharing is caring and it helps independent media reach new audiences and grow uh, a little bit bigger. That always helps. Um, you can follow us on various different social platforms. Hit the subscribe and the like button below. And thank you so much and we will see you on the road.